Good morning and welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. We're going to talk a little bit today. We're in the truck again. Um, we're going to talk about time changes. Actually, we're going to talk about attachments to things. I think that's really an important topic right now. It's an important topic in the world at large as well as the idea of, you know, moving on, homesteading, all the life change stuff. Um, you know, that I love that the light has come back for uh, the beginning of spring and of course the reason I'm out at a specific time in the mornings on some days of the week has to do with another person in my household and work schedules and while I don't do daylight savings time myself I don't I never go on or off I'm just on time on mountain time um, tomorrow morning I have to change what time I, I, I go, leave the house, to do this, so it's going to be dark again. Like, boom, dark. It's like I lose three months of, of light. Which is really, you know, it kind of sucks because I really like the fact that it's getting warm enough to do my morning hikes instead of waiting till noon. Weird. So let's talk about attachments. Actually, let's... Where do we go with this? Being attached to things, it's its like an anchor for a lot of people. And then for a lot of people, it's, um, yeah, it's an anchor around you. There's good and bad sides about the anchoring. You know, it's not, you, you can't find your center in a thing, okay? A thing outside of you. That's just, that's not a good way to do things. And we tend to have a very consumerist and attachment-oriented society. And that puts programs in your head, and you can escape those programs, but remember that they're programs. This isn't reality. Nothing that you see or do is a core objective reality. It's all relational, it's all filtered, and it's all changeable, okay? You can look at it a little sideways and things just look different. You can manipulate them differently. So. We're we're in a we're in a state of flux in a in a social sense. I really feel that things have changed dramatically with not just expectations um, and behaviors, but definitely with control of behaviors and uh, ideas of social trust and social cohesion. And it might be a really good idea right now to get a little more agility, to be a little more agile, a little more fleet on your feet. Which is really easy if you're single, okay? It's really easy if you're a dink, dual income, no kids, right? It's really hard when you're dealing with extended family and multiple children and huge age differences and having more stuff than you could pack into a medium-sized RV in terms of people, okay? The actual physical stuff is just stuff, man. You know, I, I like I like, I like like my stuff. I like playing with things. I, I'm very much in my shop oriented on, on doing little things. But I'm also a creature of enthusiasms, and when I'm done with them, I'm done with them, you know? Uh, I, we don't live in a potlatch culture. We live in a value culture, or monetary value, uh, transactional, uh, mercantile culture. So the idea of having a potlatch and then taking off and doing the next phase of your life doesn't work very well. Um, it really freaks people out, you know. And there are people in my family who are going to get extremely freaked out if I was to do that again. I've done it before in the past. So what you need to do is you need to you need to spend some intense moments when you're getting ready to do some moving and just sell, 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 gather money, 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 because that's all very important. And even then, you know, you can sit there and you can put a wad of $3,000 in your fist and people still look at the, the stuff, the attachment to things as, um, like it becomes a critical, it, it eats you alive, your comfort level, your stress level. So, and I'm not, I'm not saying that it's good to not have things, okay? Although it could be. What I'm saying is it's good to not be attached to things. Everything's replaceable. Every wrench is replaceable, okay? If you're a collector and there's an irreplaceable collectible item, well, maybe. You know, I've, I have, 
I have bought and sold collectible stuff for part time for for years and years, and I've found that there's very very few things that are actually unique. Okay, even in collection land, it's it's not there. Um, one thing that I've had to struggle with, which you probably have to struggle with, is attachment to keepsake things, and I have to. I have to remember that I'm better at this um, mapping than, than not better. I'm different at this mapping than a lot of people because I map more to the memory than to the object. You know, it's cool to have the object, but then the object can kind of go away, right? I'm not, I'm not so big on keepsakes. And keepsakes wear out. You know, that, that old stuffed animal that you've had since you were two years old is going to make you sick at some point, okay? You, the things don't last forever, and you, so. Which brings up, of course, attachment to houses and uh, vehicles and things, which I probably need to get into in another video, so let's hold off on that for a moment. When you're moving, when you're doing the homestead dance, wh whether it's to go do farming or to go relax or whatever your version is, you know, some people just want the wilderness and they don't want to spend 60 hours a week trying to coax plants out of the ground to eat. There's, there's different ways to do things. And whichever way your homestead um, adventure is going or dream is going, getting rid of everything is probably the most important thing. Being ready, being not attached helps immensely with that. So the, the attachment thing comes to things like just money. Money value is a big deal, is a big attachment. You know, I can't get rid of this old piece of furniture because I know it's worth $600 and no one will give me $600 for it so I'm going to keep it until I find someone who gives me $600 for it. That's fine if you have a furniture store. It's not fine if you're trying to move on to a homestead, okay? If what you get out of it is $200, that's what you got out of it, man. It's, what are you going to do? Leave it in a dumpster when you get frustrated? There's, there's value and then there's, um, time and value, and then there's attachment. You can be attached to the value just as dangerously as you can be attached to the thing. I have seen people moving across the country, broken down on the side of the road with just piles of shit. And I don't know any other way to say it. Shit. You know, I've moved several times. Some of them have been bigger moves. Some of them have been smaller moves. Uh, two times I managed to do it with just a backpack. One time I did it with just one trip in a Ford Ranger. Um, you know, the, the last one with multiple kids and multiple households moving together, there was a U-Haul truck involved, and that was kind of a nightmare. But I've seen people break down on the side of the road. They're, they're off to do their homestead adventure, or they're off to find, to, to go, the, there's a piece of land. Whether it's a homestead event, adventure or just an escape, I, I don't know. <sighs> But you'll, you'll come down and they'll have, usually it's something like an ancient suburban, uh, 80s, 1980s suburban, or a, um, the Yukons, something like that, with an overloaded trailer. So it's just a ridiculously overloaded trailer. It'll be 10 feet high, it'll be nets everywhere, and all the stuff that's on that trailer is broken crap. But people are so attached to the stuff, to things, to, they're so worried about not having a thing around that they will destroy themselves. And I mean literally destroy themselves. I've seen people stuck at um, rest stops and gas stations for days because they break, the, the vehicles are completely broken down because they can't just go. And they can't let go. They can't, they can't drop the trailer and leave because... Everything they have is on that trailer. Everything that's valuable to them is on that trailer. They're anchored to it. And I think they're trapped by it. So, this is just kind of an important note when you're going forward, when you're moving forward. And societally speaking, this isn't just about homesteading. This is um, 
you know, this is about mobility in life. It could be going from apartment to apartment. It could be it could be moving for a new job. It could be moving because of lockdowns, okay? Because lockdowns kill people. You know, they destroy lives. They destroy your economic security. There's a lot of reasons to be fleet on your feet, to be agile right now. And, you know, it would be a really good idea to be in a position where you can get it all down into a vehicle and take off. You know, what do you, what do you actually need? What are the things that you need? What is your pouch of papers how much clothing? You know, I'm a, I'm a thrift store addict, so clothes are very disposable. I'll buy them, wear them, thrash, trash them. It's good because when kids grow, kids grow fast, and sometimes you just have to let go. You know, and not all of my family, not all of my household members are very good at letting go, so we end up with bins and bins and bins of clothes that no one's ever going to wear again. That's a little crazy, but they're, they're there. You know, eventually you give them away, or take them back to a thrift store, something, you know, um, I, it doesn't impact me, so I don't worry about it too much, but, you know, I can, I can take off literally with a backpack, and, you know, I'll miss my stuff, I'll absolutely miss my stuff for a little while, and I'll get distracted, and I'll start doing things, and it'll be okay, Everybody can be that agile. There's nothing, there's nothing really there to prevent it except fear and attachment. And that attachment is programmed. It's not the natural state of man. Okay, Hoarding is not a natural state of man. Preparedness and security and being able to handle your life are natural states of man. And people get that all twisted up into biosurvival misprogramming that doesn't really apply. You don't need to have a house full of crap to be able to eat and stay warm. And that's all you're really looking for. You know, eat, drink, stay warm. <clears throat> um, I'll get more into that in the next video. Stay sideways.